here's where the money's made. This is what I explained to the Uber driver. The Uber driver said in like five seconds, he goes, I get it. Okay. Best explanation I ever, that I think I ever gave to somebody that made sense. I said, listen, I told him it was Black Friday. I said, listen, it's Black Friday. Everybody's at the mall right now shopping. Everybody. We drove by it. Okay. Everybody. Cars for miles. Stores with lines. At every mall in the United States. Everybody's shopping. So think about this for a minute. When you go into a mall, is there a store that maybe has items for pets? Because you, if you wanted to get an item, if you wanted to get a gift for somebody who had a pet, is there a store out of all the stores in the mall? Is there probably one that, at least one that has some pet products in it? Yes. A pet store, right? Okay. So you might even be lucky enough to find maybe two pet stores. Okay. But now let's go dig a little bit deeper inside of pets. If you go into that same mall, that mall there, that mall there, big mall, is there a store dedicated to pit bulls? No. Owners of pit bulls? No. no. This is the big understanding and difference is that there's only a limited amount of stores and they have to be general inside of, uh, they have to be, they could be niche specific. They don't have to be general stores like we're talking about, but they have to be like, you've got so much traffic passing by. If you're too specific of a store inside of a mall, your traffic is not targeted. Your traffic is just whoever comes in there. So you have to be appealing to this large amount of traffic. Where we have the ability to do is we have the ability to control the traffic that goes into our mall. So we could say, okay, stop. This mall is only open to women 35 to 55 years old or older who own Rottweilers. You see the difference? Yeah. And across from that store, we also have a wine store because women 35 to 55 who own Rottweilers and love wine. Do you see the difference? We have that kind of laser targeting ability. So the kind of stores that would never, ever, ever succeed in a retail environment is where we're going to cash in on. That's going to be where we're going to crush it. We just don't have competition. There's just, they exist online, but people don't even know. People go to traditional stores and they pay retail price. People go all the time, you're getting this for $2. No one's going to pay you $25 for this. I guarantee you, you can go to a store right now and they got some sort of a little thing like this for $25. People pay retail. People pay retail. Everybody wants to pay retail. Why do people pay retail? Their It's convenience. Yeah. They pay retail because it's convenient. But it's, what's crazy is it's way less convenient. But they don't get it. They think it's convenient because, um, yeah, it's the mall. Go to the mall with my family. The store's right there. It's really easy, right? They're still accustomed to an old way of thinking, but that benefits us. The reason it benefits us is because we're not saying to come to our store. We're not at all advertising our store, coming to our store, anything like that. We're doing something totally different. And I need you to understand this. This is something way different. That's why I'm saying don't advertise your store. Here's what we're doing. We are coming to you. You're on Facebook scrolling through the newsfeed, looking at pictures of your friends, and we're coming to you, and we're completely disrupting your newsfeed pattern with an irresistible offer that is so tailored to you, we got your attention, we hooked you, you came over. We're not saying, hey, come to our store, Bob's Discount Deals has amazing deals, look at our beautiful logo, look at our beautiful brand, none of that even matters. We're saying, oh, look at this data. You are the wife of a policeman. So I know you're a woman, I know your age, I know your husband's a policeman, I'll bet you if I put this necklace right in front of you and it's blue and it says, you know, uh, some, sort, some sort of like proud thing about being a policeman's wife or something like that. I have that, you wanna look at mine? <laughs> you have that one? So, so if I, if I, I didn't, no, I didn't talk to him. No. So, so that's an example is that you're taking a product, not a store, that product might be listed on Bob's discount deals. Don't. This, this, this 35 year old woman living in Milwaukee, who's the wife of a police officer, does not care about Bob's discount deals at all. In fact, that sounds so generic, I wouldn't even wanna go there. Why would I go there over Amazon or the mall? But that necklace, I cannot find that necklace at the mall, right? You've just stopped me. You've disrupted me in my pack, right, right in my track of going through the newsfeed, okay? This is called the variable reward system. If you've ever heard me talk about it, it is a proven thing. It is called the variable reward system. The same emotional logic that gets somebody 
to sit in front of a, of, a, of a machine at a casino all day long and do this? Why do they sit there and pull that down all day long? Because out of X amount of times, what's going to happen? They're going to win. They're going to get a reward. And that reward is going to be so much that it's going to justify the hour they just spent there. Now, that reward doesn't have to get them rich. That reward doesn't even have to make them money. Even if it just makes back their money, they just justified an hour of time spent, right? So they're going to sit there and they're going to go right back on that slot machine. They're going to do that again. They're going to keep doing slots, slots, slots until they get another reward. This is a variable reward system. The same exact logic happens when you're on, let's say, Instagram. You go to Instagram. Okay, it's loading up over here. When you go to Instagram, I love how my Instagram is filled with people's Shopify screenshots of making money, by the way. <laughs> you go to Instagram and you're doing this and you're scrolling through. Oh, there's a picture of us. Variable reward. I feel good. Like. I just gave somebody else a reward. They posted. They feel good. They got a like. Scroll through. Sponsored ad. Scroll through. Picture of some food. Picture of some cute puppies. Picture of a cute girl. Some people. I don't even know what that is. Just people. A picture quote. But you know what? Nothing. Oh. But then there's a picture of Michael, uh, Michael Hamburger. Or, yeah, Michael Hamburger posted this picture here. So I'm just liking, liking. There's a quote. And I'm just going through. But I still haven't really found a variable reward yet. Okay? A variable reward comes. Let me get like there here today. A variable reward comes when you're scrolling through. And I don't know if I'll see one right here on the spot. Okay, let's see if I go a little bit faster, see if I can find one. But a variable reward comes. And also, it doesn't happen right away. If it happened this fast, people wouldn't spend much time on social media. People spend like an hour scrolling or half an hour scrolling. And they don't realize they're looking for a variable reward. First of all, do you see how easy this is for me to do? Look, effortless. Social media makes it effortless. And I'm still looking for a variable reward. I'm seeing tons and tons and tons of friends. Okay, I'm going to have to fake a variable reward real quick. Let's say it was this right here. Let's say, just hypothetically, let's say that this is a friend and this is a picture of her daughter and it says, says, I'm so grateful my daughter made it out of the hospital alive. We were so fearful that she was going to die. Uh, the, the doctor said that she's going to be okay. Oh my God, for everybody that was wondering, thank you so much. And I just sat there and thought, if I wasn't scrolling through Instagram, I wouldn't even have known that she was all right. That just justified X, whatever X amount of time I just spent on Instagram, done, justified. I might have been sitting there in bed with plenty of other more effective things to do, and I just was scrolling. All I needed was one variable reward to justify it. One thing that I only would have saw if I was randomly scrolling. That right there is that whatever that adrenaline kind of thing that we need. Not adrenaline, but there's like a, not euphoric, I forget the word, but it's like a, it's like a thing we crave. It's serotonin. Like serotonin, right? We get that serotonin. Like, it gives us that juice, and it happens on anything, on Snapchat, you know? You may be scrolling through somebody's feeds. Maybe you're following somebody like Lawrence Aponte. I follow him, and you're like, oh, he's at the gym, whatever. You know, he's eating some food. He's out with friends. And the next thing you know, he's like, oh, hey, here's a quick tip of a site I just found where you can do custom graphics on shoes and sell them on your AliExpress site. Here's the site. Here's the thing. Here's this. Thing. You're like, what? Had I not been randomly perusing Snapchat, I never would have got the resource. Thus... Randomly perusing chat, Snapchat must be a good use of time, right? And then you justified it. Now you are in the variable reward system. I'm just going to randomly go through because every once in a while, pop, here comes, an, here comes a great thing that's worth it. That's how social media works. That's how the casino business works, the random variable rewards of winning every once in a while. That is how this business works. Meet your customers there. They're in the middle of this casino-esque variable reward system scrolling through until that magical thing happens, which is, how did Facebook know I was, a pol uh, I was the wife of a policewoman and this jewelry and then make it so compelling? For the next X amount of people, whatever, it's free? I just pay for shipping and handling? Okay, I'm done. I'm gonna stop. I've accepted my variable reward. Even just getting a click. I just scrolled through all this stuff right here, right? I didn't click on a single ad. An ad has to be very compelling to grab me, right? So just to get the click means that you, you've, you've won in the variable reward system. You've taken someone from a social media site and got them to go off to your site. That is the power of what you have in your hands. You've taken someone from their phone and got them to go visit a website. That, you could pat yourself on the back, back for that alone. You've proven 
that you can pull people out of an environment and onto your site. Now that you got them on your site, if your offer's compelling and you have things set up, it's just a numbers game. You bring 100 people to a, to a, to a, a product that works and it's free and it's just a reasonable cost for shipping, someone's gonna buy. And then once you can get someone to buy, then it's just a numbers game. Can I flip $5 into 10? And that's it. That's all this thing is. You're disrupting people. So if you understand that logic, it's a lot harder to just show uh, pictures of, a, of, of goggles than it is to find something that's just got that, got that viral aspect. That's why I tell beginners to do free plus shipping because free is the best, easiest tool you have to have a compelling offer to get them to go off of, off of the site. That's why most people start with free plus shipping. Once you get the hang of it, yeah, you can sell products for like 20, 25, 30 bucks, okay? It's gotta be something that draws them off. Um, so think of viral products, think of, think of cool things. Um, don't just think of normal things. Eventually, you'll sell normal things. Eventually, maybe you love fashion. Yeah, you'll sell cute handbags and stuff like that. But in the beginning, sell some crazy like hair accessory or makeup cosmetics. Instead of having a fashion blog, sell a little cosmetic accessory that you give away for free that literally just do, like helps them put on makeup better. Or it's, a, it's an unbelievable, unbelievably cool case. So what are some examples? Let's go through a couple examples. What are some examples of stopping people in their tracks? One of the best ways to stop, stop people in their tracks is to have something that's laser targeted to their interest that, is, that immediately cannot be found in stores. So if I'm scrolling and if I see it, if I pass by it, there is nowhere else to get it, okay? That's why we all started with print on demand. Most of us, not all, most of us started before Shopify, print on demand. We took a logo, we took a design, we printed it onto a t-shirt and the design basically spoke directly to that audience. So for good ideas, for good, for good ways to be able to come up with stop people in their track stuff, go to Teespring and go right here to the top and look at like, look at this kind of stuff. <coughs> Hobbies, animals, locations, sports, entertainment, names, occasions, jobs, whatever it is, look at all of this kind of stuff. Jobs t-shirts. Okay, so just like, like a basic example. Trust me, I'm an engineer. Okay. And this, uh, this was selling back in 2013. So I doubt this is, I don't even know how much. So trust me, I'm an engineer. See that little thing right there? Okay. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Trust me, I'm whatever it is. So trust me, I'm an engineer. It's as simple as targeting engineer-based keywords uh, and professional-based keywords on Facebook and showing them this. If you go to the mall, there might be a one-off t-shirt store that might have this shirt. The odds of it, low. Possible, but low. But even if there was, does an engineer think, I'm gonna go to the mall, I'm gonna go to that gifts and novelty shop, I'm gonna sort through 50 shirts to see if there's one that happens to be engineer related. Does, does the engineer's friends think, you know, I need a gift for Ted the engineer. I'm gonna go to the mall, I'm gonna go to the gifts and novelty shop, I'm gonna shop through those 50 t-shirts to try to find one. No. This is your, suddenly, unique selling proposition. I know, why don't I just go straight to them? Straight to them on Facebook. That's it. That's all this game is. Do you understand? Is it starting to make sense? That's all it is. All it is is something that, this is, what, this is where you, you can stop them in their tracks, make a compelling offer. Then when they get to your store, you can have generic stuff. You can have a whole category dedicated to engineers. Okay? This could be on a cell phone case. This could be on a coffee mug. This could be on a hat. You could take the same design and put it five or six places. Okay. You could take this design right here and go to an outsourcer and say, hey, $20 if you can redesign a new version of this, that's even better. But it has to be different. 20 bucks later, you got a unique design. Then you go to a site, any kind of site. Let's go to a site like Gearbubble. You go to a site like Gearbubble and you can put it on necklaces right there. For, for women that are engineers, you can put it on a coffee mug. You can put it on a t-shirt. You can put it on a cell phone case. Put it on anything. Right? And look, they even got categories too. Okay? So you just go through the same thing. This is where you go and find stuff. Look, yoga. Okay. So that's, look, ugly Christmas sweater with a yoga theme on it. <coughs> now I'm going to stay at home. Wait. <laughs> and it says, wait for Santa. No, nah, I'm going to stay at home and wait for Santa. 
Okay? <laughs> now, if it were Christmas, if I were into yoga, and if I was kind of like, I might end up going to an ugly Christmas sweater party. I don't even know if I will, but I might. Would I want this sweater? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Now, I might be able to find this sweater at the mall, at the novelty and gift shop, in that stack of 50 shirts. I might be able to. Probably not, <laughs> if they even have it the right side. But probably not. Do you understand how cool? Put yourself in the mind. How cool am I going to be? Showing up to this ugly Christmas sweater. Everybody else is wearing those funny, regular old ones. And I got the, nah, I'm going to stay at home and wait for Santa. Everybody's going to talk. They're all going to want to take pictures of me. They're all going to be talking about me. I haven't even bought the shirt yet. And these are the feelings going on in my mind. That is a variable reward. That's what you're going for. So go to these sites and, and get the idea, get the concept. And if you took the same concept, you can put it on uh, all kinds. Now, I wouldn't take the ugly Christmas sweater concept, but actually, there's a lot you could do. This. Now, I'm going to stay at home and blank. It's probably a template you could do here. Lots of angles, you guys. Lot. This is the concept. Part of the reason that I was able to have success with Shopify wasn't my skills with Shopify. And part of the reason I was able to help so many students wasn't. It was because I spent the time understanding the dynamic of what causes people to buy and focused on creative ideas to teach people. That's it. That's all I do. Okay? Custom jewelry. Peace, love, and yoga. Okay, so you guys, get, you guys get the basics, right? All I care about is yoga and music and like maybe three people. Okay, <laughs> so let's talk about this. Could the word yoga and music, could those be swapped out? Yes. To what? Fishing and, fishing and beer. Fishing and beer? Right. Okay, but like, okay, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a coffee mug, so maybe blank and coffee. All I care about is blank and coffee, something that simple. Now, go back to Facebook ads. Go back to Facebook ads. All I care about is blank. What's, what's, a, passionate, what's a passionate niche? Sex and candy. Well, not like, I mean like a, <laughs> like a passionate, uh, like, like a replacement for yoga. Bacon. What? Bacon. 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 Meditation. Keep going. So namaste is a little bit more of, it's, it's like another, it's like relating to this yoga-esque kind of audience. But Very spiritual. But what, what I'm saying is you can get, like, we talked about motorcycles earlier, right? Yeah. Okay, so like, watch, like Harley, do you want to get specific? Like Harley Davidson, okay? Not employers. Not schools, remember? Employer schools. Interest. Look at the difference. 93,000 employers, 5,000 schools, 25 million interest. It's right there. Harley Davidson, 6 million, 400, uh, 6 million. Now watch this. Narrow audience. Narrow audience and coffee. Okay, there you go. Now, 5.8 million is a lot of people. So when would I, would I run an ad to 5.8 million people? Would I be willing to, to risk $1,000 on trying to sell something? Sure. So for me, there's a huge benefit in I'm willing to play the long game on a, on a product or a niche or a store because I've experienced that it can make hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I've got that vision that's a bit, little bit bigger of a long game. But for the newest person, no, you're going to probably need a little bit of a finer audience to try to find some buyers before going broad. If by going broad like this, you're, okay, so here's the best way to explain it. When you go broad, you're relying on Facebook to do the optimizing for you. Facebook needs data. They need buyers. The more buyers you send them, the more they're like, oh, okay, we get it. Okay, finally, finally we know who your buyers are. And even though there's a 5.8 million person audience, they're really starting to show up more to your buyers. So you've got to play the long game, get a lot of buyers on your pixel to Facebook. The alternative way to do it is to start a little bit more specific with this audience. Like, yeah, like, um, okay, so let's, yeah, so let's, let's try. Okay, so first of all, let's, let's look at this mug. All I care about is yoga and music. Let's, let's go to the graphic designer. 
20 bucks, the site that I'm using in case I say it a million times, but you guys can just go there yourself. Go to upwork.com, okay? Go to upwork.com and just do like, type in like t-shirt design, okay? Type in t-shirt design, um, you know, any hourly rate, $10, hour, $10 an hour and below, any job success, sure, 90%. Any category, well, we can figure that out later. Advanced filters. Let's say they, let's just try to, let's go at least a thousand hours in here within the last six months only. Active within the last two weeks. Um, other languages, English, any English level, that's fine. Update. We went pretty specific there. Like, here's, a, here's Gino, a graphic artist, Amazon assistant, virtual artist. 100% job success, $8.89 an hour, has worked 8,299 hours on, on this site. Um, graphic designer, um, expert photo editor, so this is $6.25 an hour, 10,000 hours. So you're going to go to somebody, you're going to go to these people, and what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down, you can read all their stuff and all this kind of stuff, but ultimately, um, and I'm not, it looks like I'm not logged in. So if I were logged in, it'd be a little bit better. But essentially, um, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to go in and you're going to be able to uh, you know, read about them or look at their portfolio. They're usually going to offer some information about you and what they do. What you're going to do is you're going to post a job saying that you're looking for a t-shirt designer to design graphics for, for you to sell on t-shirts. And you're going to say they're, they're $6.25 an hour, so you're going to talk to them. You're going, to get, get him, you're, going to, you're going to post a job, and then you're going to invite the person to the job. And you're going to say, how many hours does it take you to design a graphic? Like if I gave you this graphic and said, that, trust me, I'm, I'm an engineer, and you, you design a better one, how long is that going to take you? An hour? They're going to tell you, oh, something like that would take me probably two hours. So you're like, OK, so $12.50 roughly? OK. If I do bulk with you, can you do a little bit better? Yeah? OK, so if I give you five jobs in a row, can we do $10 a design? Okay, let's just design on a flat rate then. So here's what the job is. I will pay you $50, and I want five designs. And there you go. You hire them. Now, before hiring them, look at their work. And then also ask them how long their turnaround time is. But look, they've got a very good job success rating. So as long as their work is good, you're going to do fine with this. So the idea is I just found somebody who's going to design all my stuff for me, and I'm just going to go on Skype, and I'm going to communicate with them, and we're going to go from there. This is my mic. I didn't know if my mic was on. I'm going to go from there. So basically, I'm going to line up maybe two or three designers, start spending them 10 or $20 a piece. This right here, I will have them make it a little bit better, and I will change. All I care about is word and coffee and, like, maybe three people. Okay? So word is going to be whatever niche it is. So if I'm in the motorcycle niche, I can maybe say all I care about is riding in a picture of a motorcycle, an emblem of a motorcycle. And I'll say, maybe make it a little bit more manly. I'll tell them, like, I'll, I'll say something like, like, make it a little bit more, like, dedicated to somebody who rides motorcycles and put all I care about masculine. All I care about is, is you know, all I care about is um, riding and coffee. Or all I care about is motorcycles and coffee. Or all I care about is Harleys and coffee. There you go. And now they got a coffee mug. That's all I care about. Right? So it's, it's, it's a simple thing. It could take 10 bucks, and if it doesn't work, you're out 10 bucks, plus maybe 10 bucks in ads. Worst case, you're out 20 bucks. Weekends are tough, but it's hard to niche that one. Yeah, yeah. You, so again, perfect example. Weekends and coffee. That's what you would find in a novelty gift shop, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's generic enough, people will get a kick out of it. Yeah. But here, we have to disrupt somebody in their path and say, that speaks to me, mm -hmm. you know? Like, you could target single moms on here, you know? So you can, come, you can go to like... You can go to like Pinterest and you can go and type in like, you know, single mom quote. And you can go and you can find something to give to your $10 an hour designer um, and see if there's something here that's like an encouraging, like something like a single mom. You know, like single moms sometimes are, are proud. They've been through a lot probably have been through something rough, and so it's nice for them to, to be bold about it. So you might go on here and, and find something. 
oh, this is what a badass mom looks like. There could probably be a play off of that. Yeah, where was that? Right there, flag on the left-hand side. Second one is by the bottom. Oh, yeah. Independently owned and operated. <laughs> Perfect. So, and then there's 20 kick-ass quotes for women who love being single. So now there's another source here. Too blessed to be stressed. Um, it's not showing up yet. Hold on. Sometimes I'm single means I'm drama-free, less stressed, and I refuse to settle for less, okay? We got quotes. Now, what I'm saying is we can put these quotes on mugs, and the thing is, is this. Yes, these might be in the novelty shop, but we have the ability to put this on a mug and literally target single moms right in the newsfeed, okay? That's, that's what I'm saying. Yes, I'm single, and you'll have to be effing amazing to change that. <laughs> The most profound relationship we'll ever have is the one with ourselves. Now we're feeling good about being single instead of feeling stressed about it. And you get the branding that Shirley Yeah. Be with someone that makes you happy. So instead of like a little whiteboard type thing, you could have, you could have somebody do that and basically into a graphic, into a nice graphic. Be, be blank. Be someone that makes you happy. And they feel good about that. Being single is smarter than being in the wrong relationship. I'm not saying any of these are going to be mind-blowingly amazing, but what I'm saying is that if done right, you can stop a single mom in her tracks, feed her the variable reward, get her to click on your site. Does this make sense? You can stop a military, you can stop a veteran in their tracks, speak to them, get them to click, and come to your site. You can, you can target the spouse of a veteran, get them to stop in their tracks, and come to your site. And if you can learn how to stop people on the variable reward and come to your site, you can win, you can win at this.